What is up, Bradford Bass family? Welcome back to the channel. Today is part two of the Minn Kota Tarova install on the Bass Tracker Classic XL. So before we get into the step-by-step -step process, guys, I just wanted to show you a quick overview of what it is I'm going to be doing um, and why I'm doing it, and then we'll go from there. So the first thing is I will be installing this MKA21 quick release bracket and the reason that is guys is if you put your cover on your boat the cover that comes with the tracker or that you can order the actual tracker cover if you install the Tarova directly to the bow of the boat the cover will not fit on there so you have to have this quick release bracket which is this MKA 21 so you can actually take the trolling motor off quickly to put your cover on because the Taroba has to mount so far up on the front of the bow. So there's a lot of people that's done this and have used this same bracket. And one of the issues is, which I told you guys about in uh, part one of the series, is that the weld breaks. And here's why I think the weld breaks. So on this bracket, this part right here actually mounts to the bottom of the Taroba itself. This part right here, this puck, is actually the part that anchors to the bow of the boat. So what happens is, and this is just you know my thoughts, is this is such a small amount of space, <clears throat> and you can't see the weld on the front of my boat because I have this rub rail system mounted. But you mount this puck, and what happens is people mount this puck directly to the bow of the boat, and it's such a small amount of space that every time that trolling motor bounces, and whether that is going down the water and that's why it's so important to use the stabilizer bar but not only that every time you engage the trolling motor you know it, it's pulling force up onto this so it's almost just pivoting right here in this small area so what i wanted to do is i wanted to come up with a way to essentially distribute this pulling force area further back okay so that's why I came up with the aluminum plate idea. So my plan is, I'm gonna show you real quick. I'm gonna use all the old holes that, that, that the Minn Kota Edge were attached to. And just so you guys know, this plate is actually the same length as that Minn Kota Edge. So it's pretty much the same footprint. And I already drilled a couple holes. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that exactly. But my plan is to I gotta drill a couple more holes here to use the old holes. I'm gonna put this plate down and then I'm gonna put the puck on this plate like this, okay? And I'm actually gonna drill and tap this plate. So I'm not gonna run the screws through the plate and into the bow of the boat. The, the, these front, this, the part that anchors this puck will only be in the aluminum. All the weight that's on the bow will be from these holes back, okay? So there's gonna be no there's gonna be no attachment point to the bow up close to this edge. And I believe that's the issue, is when it's pulling up right there, it's breaking this weld, which like I said, you can't see. So that is the plan, guys. I think, I think it'll work. And that's another reason I went with the half inch aluminum plate instead of a quarter inch, because I wanted to be able to have enough meat there to get some good threads in. Now this puck has four mounting holes. I might put two more in the middle or just put one in the middle just to give it a little more rigidity, rigidity. but I already, I already installed one. You can see right, right here, I kind of screwed up because like a little practice hole and I wish I would have done it on the other side, but I'll, I'll fill it and paint it with something. But you can see down in there how I threaded it. And just that one, that one inch and a half bolt through there mounted to that, this thing wouldn't budge. So I know once I get four or five or six screws in this thing with some Loctite, it's, it's not going anywhere. So that's the plan, guys. Now let's get into, I guess, the first step of installing this. All right, guys. So we're going to start with getting the plate mounted to the bow of the boat. I'm going to say this um, one last time, just in case you didn't see part one of this series, the tools and materials part. The way I'm installing this doesn't mean this is the way you have to install it. So everything I'm doing is just to help you if you want to install it exactly how I did. You may have better ways. I'm not even 100% this is actually going to work. Only time will really tell. I think it'll work, but no one really knows until we put it in, you know, put it to test. So 
The first thing I want to do is I want to use all the old original holes. Not because I'm opposed to drilling any more holes. It's just because these holes lay out pretty good where they already are. And that's where the old Minn Kota edge was. The only hole I'm probably not going to use is this one back here. And the reason being, it's just such a pain in the butt to get to. And you can see right here, guys, um, when you're taking off the old trolling motor and, you know, as you're installing the new one, you got to take this front panel off and they give you one little tiny hole right here that you got to reach up into. And, and it's a pain in the butt. So this hole right here, you, as you can see, is so close to this edge, but it's so far over here, it was a nightmare to get it off. I had to rig up some stuff to get that thing off. So I'm probably just gonna fill this hole. Or if I do drill, I might put another one closer um, to the whole entry point that make it a little easier on myself. But all the other holes I'm gonna use. So what I did guys to get the pattern, and I actually didn't record this part, um, I did it late last night. I just took like a um, cooking sheet that you put like on a baking pan and I laid it out where I wanted it. And the holes, the original holes, you know, they're raised enough where you could feel them. So I got this sheet and I kind of squared up the edges as to where I wanted it, you know, with this pad, with this rubber um, C decking. And I basically just felt where the holes were and I poked holes in the sheet. And then I used that as my guide um, to put onto my aluminum plate, essentially. So I already got these ones and these ones drilled. We're gonna drill these two. And then we're probably gonna countersink. We're definitely not gonna countersink these two holes because the, the actual edge, I mean the, the Tarova bracket, the quick release bracket will sit on top of these screws. So I don't want them raised up. So I'll definitely countersink these ones. So let's get into that now. All right guys, so we're gonna drill these next two holes right here. I'm gonna be using a quarter inch bit now, what I did on the other two was I drilled the quarter inch bit down and then I came back through with the next size bit up. I don't know what this is off the top of my head and ran it back through just to clean it up and give yourself a little bit more play. That way, in case it's just, it doesn't match up with the bow of the boat exactly. So this will, guys, just so you know, you might want to wear safety glasses. Um, you will get a lot of material coming out of this as you drill it. So you definitely want to probably put a trash can underneath it or something to help catch some of that scrap. So let's go ahead and drill this first one My bit might be a little dull, but we got her. So as you guys can see, there's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of scrap there. So you just want to wipe it off here into my trash can I got set up down below. And then we'll get the second one drilled. And I'm gonna do the same thing as I just did there, guys. So I'll show you how we're gonna countersink after that. All right, guys, now I'm gonna show you how to countersink these holes. I'll show you one, what it looks like without it being countersunk. And as you can see, see how it sits up above like that? When you countersink one, it sits flush. So that's, that's what we want to go with. So how we do that is, I don't know if this is the proper way, but what I did was I just took a 15, 30 seconds drill bit, and I basically just drill it down in there a little bit. So just like that create yourself a create yourself a little crater there it should fall right down in there so that's how we do it guys it's, like i said i don't know if that's the proper way but it seems to work it's good enough for me so we'll get all these get all these counters sunk and we'll get to the next step here all right guys we've got all the holes drilled i just kind of put it up here to fit it make sure everything works and it does Everything lined up good, drop right in through the bow of the boat. 
I forgot to mention on my boat, this corner screw was actually a, a lag screw. So it wasn't a um, nut and bolt. It was actually just threaded in there, um, self tapped in there or whatever. And I'll probably do the same thing. I think the reason they did that is because it's so close to this edge and the way the, the, the hull slopes down, they probably couldn't get a tool in there to get the um, nut and washer on there. So I'll probably just use the same lag. It was in there real good, so I trust it. So let's get into uh, the hardware stuff now, guys. All right, guys, before we get into the hardware, a couple more things on this aluminum plate that I forgot to mention. So when you're ordering your plate, you definitely want to get a 600 series or above. This is a 6061, and what I mean by that is just how strong your aluminum is. You know, they have 400 series, 500, 600, all up to 700. 700 being your strongest. But 600 and 700 are both pretty rigid. Um, the main reason I went with the 600 was one, is what I first saw is available that I could find. Two, it was cheaper. But also, for some reason, which this will probably never affect us, but 700 will start to melt at a lower temperature rate than 661 will. So, for whatever reason, I don't know. But like I said, we don't need to worry about that. So, I would at least get into the 600s um, as far as your alloy goes. And then another thing, the reason I went with aluminum was because aluminum is obviously lighter. If I would have got this same size plate in steel, I mean, you're probably looking at least 30 pounds, I would think. <laughs> um, but the aluminum is 8 pounds. But aluminum still gives you that rigid. Now, aluminum is a ferrous metal. It, it, it still warps a little. I mean, it'll still flex a little more. You know, just like our aluminum hulls on our boat. But... I don't I don't believe there's gonna be any concern. This is very rigid, so that's the main reason I went with the limit to keep the weight down on the boat. So now let's get into the hardware. Alright guys, getting into the hardware. Um when you're opening everything up, you want to get your, your your hardware packages out of your MKA21 quick quick release bracket box. You're gonna to want to get your hardware that came with your main coat of Tarova out, get everything laid out. And so this is kind of what we got. And I've already taken some of the stuff out of the bags, but this bag right here came with their quick release bracket and it also had these four screws right here so these four longer screws were actually intended to mount the puck to the bow of the boat but since i'm not actually mounting the puck to the bow of the boat and i told you in the series uh part one of the series I ordered a special screw to mount the puck to the plate. I'll be using these screws to actually mount the plate to the bow of the boat instead of the puck. If that makes sense, I know it's kind of confusing. Also, um, you're gonna get some washers. These washers right here, not gonna use them. Um, that's why I got these two inch fender washers. I mean, you look at the size difference. You know what I mean? It, it's massive. So. This right here will just give it more meat on the underside of the bow for um, the more meat to grab, essentially when the Troy motor is pulling up instead of these smaller washers. So that's why I went with these bigger two inch fender washers. And I'm hoping they're not too big. They might actually be overlapping each other. Let me let's take a look right here real quick. We'll find out. Get that on the center point. Nope, they're good. There's plenty of gap there. So, you know, imagine this underneath the bow of the boat. So. Does not work there? Um, it comes with these rubber spacers. Um, I might use one of these. I don't know. We'll just have to see once we go to start tightening stuff down. How how level it is and how the lumen plate actually sits on the bow of the boat. And it also comes with these lock nuts. And that's what we'll be using on the underside. So the underside we'll be using these fender washers with these lock nuts to attach. To these bolts right here these machine screws so that's it on the hardware guys um also this pack right here i believe this pack i don't know what this is. we'll find out here later on once i get into putting everything together because you also got to have you also got the hardware to mount the actual um plate to the bottom the the mka 21 bracket plate to the bottom of the trova so i'm sure that's what some of that hardware right there is for all right, guys, let's get into actually uh, getting this getting this mounted, guys. All right, guys, something else before we go any further also I think you're going to want to do is you're going to want to glue these nuts to these washers because when you're trying to extend that long wrench up under there, you don't want this washer falling off. So I'm going to put a little Gorilla Glue here. 
I already got one of them done. So basically I just put a little bit of glue here on the bottom side of the nut around this lip right here. And then I lay it over that. Then I just take the, the screw and thread it in there a little bit to help hold it. So we'll get all those ready to go guys and we'll let it dry for a little bit. Then we'll get to uh, getting this plate attached to the bell. So another thing guys that helps out is to take your phone, put it on the video recorder, and then turn the light on. And you can actually, let's see if I can see if you can see it right here. I don't know if I got the camera facing. But you can actually use it to sit right there and it kind of works as like you can see up in there what you're working with. So instead of trying to like crouch over, I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Let me take the camera off here. Yeah, so as you can see, you can just use this to shine up in there. And then there's enough room here to the side to put your wrench in. So then you can kind of, if you watch there on the screen, you can see it go in. You can see it guiding in there. So this really helps um, as well as, you know, just looking down in the hole. So this is a little tip for you guys. All right, guys. So we got one of them on. I think the best way to go about this is put your, take your washer with your nut glued on there. Set it down in your 7 16 wrench, which you got on your extension piece. And then slide it up into this hole. And then basically you can kind of use one hand, use one hand over here to, you know, to grab this extension piece. And if you, you can actually see down in the hole enough into the boat where you can see when the nuts and the washer slide up underneath the thread. And then you just kind of got to feel for it and just kind of hold the wrench there until you'll feel it finally start to catch. And once you do it, then you can run it up. So it's not quite as bad as I thought it was going to be. I didn't think I was going to be able to see them through these holes. So that, that helps out a lot. All right, guys. So you're going to just kind of look down in there until you can find your, your wrench. And if you leave your phone leave your phone shining in there it helps you know project light up inside there or use a flashlight or whatever so you can see the end of this i'm close just don't know exactly oh my light went off about right there the center point so I felt it hit. Like I said, guys, you just gotta kinda just feel for it. It's, you'll feel it start to catch the threads. Second. I think that's it right there. Hopefully I'm not cross-threading it. Tighten it all the way yet. Yeah, I don't want to tighten it all the way. Yet. 
Three down, two to go, guys. Well, guys, there it is. We got the plate mounted. And I got to tell you guys, now that I got it mounted, I know for a fact it's going to work. <laughs> this, this joker right here ain't going nowhere. This thing is sturdy as it's going to get. We're going to mount that puck somewhere right here on the end of this. We're going to drill and tap it in there. That half inch aluminum right there give you enough meat right there to support so you don't have to run the screws in the bow right there. And I think that's going to be the, the ticket right there, guys. You can kind of see up under there. But yeah, that, that plate's going no place. So I'm happy with it so far, guys. Let's get to drilling and tapping this bad boy in. All right, guys, we got a couple of these tapped in now. So how I went about this was I just drilled and tapped one screw in there. And then I actually put the screw in there, you know, finger tight to hold the pad. And then I ran my drill bit down in each hole. That way I can make sure I have everything lined up correctly. Then also I did drill another one here in the center. So that's how I went about marking everything. Um, fairly simple. Get one in, get it to hold it to the hold in place. Then get your second one in, then you can hold it square. Then you can just put your drill bit down in here like this. And get your last two drilled. So I'll show you guys how we'll do the tap process now. When you go to drill and tap this, this is how you're gonna do it. So First, you want to pre-drill your hole with the bit, the pilot bit that comes with this tap. Put a little WD-40 down in there. And I suggest putting something underneath the plate. That way you're not getting it everywhere. You just want to slowly work it with this tap bit. Go down a little bit, come back out. Put a little more WD-40 in there. Do the same thing. Down. Clean your, clean your tap off every once in a while. A little WD back down in there. Down, back out. Shot back up your mess a little bit, get some of them shavings out of there. Sorry guys. Step your shot back a little bit, get a little more WD down in there. Back it out, a little more WD. Say so you guys get you guys get it, man. Same thing every time. You just want to do a little bit at a time. Back it out. A little bit at a time, back it out. Get some more WD down in there. Because if you don't use some kind of cutting oil, you will snap the bit. I've already done it twice. I did it here, and I did it up there. So I thought I could get away without using it. I thought since it's being aluminum, it'd be a little soft enough, but it's not. So you definitely need to use some kind of cutting oil. Just take your time. You ain't got to rush through it. About through there now, guys. Yep, we're good. So that's it, guys. That's how you drill and tap. Like I said, you can see here, um, I screwed up one there, snapped the bit off, snapped one off there. That's why it's all banged up looking now. Sucks. So live and learn, right? I mean, I know better than that when I'm using, like, when I'm cutting into like a hard steel. I thought aluminum would be soft enough, but it's not. That goes to show you that how tight, how good that, how snug. That's threading in there. It snapped two of those tap bits. And another thing is, guys, so originally I said to use um, the tap set from Harbor Freight. You probably still can, but I went down and picked up a couple of these. Um, they're $7 from Lowe's, and it actually comes with the drill. I got the tap out of it. it comes with the pilot bit you need to pre drill with, and then the uh, pilot tap, the tap bit. Seven bucks. I got a couple of those. Those are they're definitely a lot higher quality. Um, than the Harbor Freight one. The first one I snapped off, I went to Harbor Freight, I thought it was just because of the Harbor Freight one. So I went and bought a couple of those and I ended up snapping one of those after my second hole. So that's when I realized I gotta use cutting oil. So don't be stupid like me, use the cutting oil and it's a simple process. So let's get this, uh, let's get this puck mounted guys. 
All right, guys, this is where you're gonna use the inch and a half special order stainless steel coarse thread um, quarter inch bolts as they attach the puck to the plate. But before you do that, you wanna put a little thread lock on there. That'll help really give it a good bite in there. You go ahead and put send that joker home. Not gonna over tighten it yet. We'll come back and tighten everything up. So that's how you guys, that's how you do that, guys. Keep your mess cleaned up. We've got one more to do, then we're good to go. All right, guys. So now we're getting into mounting the actual quick plate, um, the quick release plate that mounts to the trove itself. It's pretty simple, actually. I already kind of got it started, but I'll show you a couple things. Obviously, you got to pull the side plates off of the Tarova. There's two of them. There's one on each side, and each side's held by two screws. Here's the other side i got laying down here. Easy to take off. And basically, all you do is you got you got six of these inch and a half long stainless. You're going to take six of these lock nuts, and then you got these smaller washers that come with your pack. And the holes on the bracket already line up. So I already got one on there as you can see. And then you just do the same thing on all of them. I already got the screws in them. Um, you need a 7 16 nut driver. Put a little bit of tape in the end of it just to hold the, just so you can hold the nut flush with the end of the nut driver. And it's pretty easy guys. I mean, there's not a lot to it. So you basically just put your nut washer on there. You can see right, you can see right here um, where I got the screw sticking through. So let's go get the nut and washer on there and do it on both sides, tighten her up and that bracket's installed guys. Also this piece right here will come in your pack. This is, this is how you lock it. Basically all this does is it just drops in here. I'll show you real quick. So this little piece right here is how you lock your trolling motor on. It just slides down in there. You see the hole in the bottom right there. Just slide that down in there, down in the hole. And then you just run your screw through that hole all the way through and, and then you put your nut washer on there. So that's how that mechanism works on that guys. Um, yeah, simple as that. So I'm gonna get get the rest of these on here. You know, I would show you guys um, how to put a nut and washer on, but I need both hands and I obviously don't think you guys probably need to be told I put nut and washers on. So pretty simple stuff guys. Put those six on, put the cover back on the side and we'll get her finished up. Well guys, I got it all attached, all on there, and I realized I screwed up. So I know I said installing this bracket right here was easy. There is one thing you gotta remember, and you gotta pay attention to. As you can see here, I mounted this bracket backwards. <laughs> um, this, I'm trying to hold the trolling motor, but this part right here actually needs to be right here. The smaller part goes up towards the front of the boat because as you can see right here, this this opening right here, this opening right here is where the trolling motor engages into while the plate's covering it. Boneheaded mistake. You know, I did it on purpose. I just wanted to be able to show you guys what not to do. No. All honesty, guys. That's why you read the directions. Don't be a man. Just read the damn directions. So, I'm gonna take this all back apart. Get that bracket flipped around, then we should be good to go. Well guys, we got her on there correctly this time. So, got the trove all mounted. It's easy to easy to remove is all you do guys. It's got this little pin that sticks out and you can put a little collar pin in there to lock it. Just pull this out right here. And then you can literally just pick the trolling motor up off that puck. So, sorry, I'm trying to do it all with one hand, so. That's the easy, that's how simple it is, guys. And that's the whole point of the quick release bracket. Is so you can just take it off there so you can get your cover on. So that's it, guys, on the install. I think the next video, part three, we'll be installing the stabilizer bar for the head of the motor. And we'll be hooking up the transducer, um, hooking the trolling motor up, mounting the GPS puck. So stay tuned for that, guys. Um, one more thing we did do here, which I guess is not really uh, um, 
nothing special but so it does come with a mint coated sticker the trova does and i put it right here on that plate and i think it looks nice i think it makes it really pop so just a suggestion you know if you end up going with this plate especially if you do the black one so looks really good all right guys stay tuned for part three um hit that like button if you would subscribe i hope i helped somebody out if um if you got any questions just leave it in the comment section and i'll be gladly to help you out so Everybody have a good one. Stay safe out there, and I'll talk to you soon.